In today's episode, Brian asks, in your opinion, what are the most important or insightful data points to track to ensure that your content marketing is effective? Is anybody there? Is anybody consuming my content? And then are people doing what we want them to do after they consume the content? My awareness, engagement, conversion. Those are the data points. And, and what those metrics are vary on the content, right? You know, a podcast is going to have some different numbers than a YouTube video. It's going to have uh, some different numbers than a white paper or an ebook or a blog post or a newsletter. They're all going to have different numbers, but those are the three big categories. Awareness is the first and most important with content marketing. If nobody's reading or watching or listening, everything else doesn't matter. And while some folks will rant about the importance of vanity metrics or, or how pointless they are, like how many followers do you have or how many subscribers do you have, if the number's zero, you've got a problem. Where things like vanity metrics run into trouble, of course, is people think that is the goal. It's not the goal, but it's a goal on the way to a business outcome. And if it, that number is zero, nothing else matters. It's, it's your standard top, middle, and bottom of the funnel. What's happening at each of these stages? And how is content playing a role in each of those stages? Content has to fit intent, right? There's, so there's four basic intents. There is, I'm trying to figure out the problem. That's number one. Number two is, I figured out the problem, now I'm trying to figure out how to solve it. That's two. Number three is, I figured out the problem, I figured out how to solve it, now I need to figure out who I'm going to do business with. Right? And number four is, I've bought the thing to solve my problem. Is it solving my problem? Which is essentially you know, awareness, engagement, conversion, and retention. We know these metrics. We have these metrics in every piece of marketing software that's worth its salt, or you know, at least in our tech stack. But we don't ever really spend a lot enough time telling the story of it along the way. <clears throat> what content you have for retention is not the content that is going to be great for awareness, right? Here's how to use our product is very useful for retaining customers. You know, here's how to get the most of our product. If someone doesn't even know what their problem is, that content's not going to help them, right? Here's a, the instruction manual on this video camera. Do you, and the, person, the, you know, the awareness person's like, I, I, I don't even know if I need a video camera. And so those are the data points to look at and then map them to the individual pieces of content. If you think about setting up conversions in something like, say, Google Analytics, and you were to then map out the content that participated in each of those conversions, you should see content in different places, right? Your white paper probably shouldn't, well, depending on, on the white paper's topic, a white paper might not be an awareness generator, but it might be an engagement generator. And it could be a conversion generator. But where, where do you intend for it to be? And here's the part that goes wrong with all content marketing analytics. You don't do anything with it. Seth Godin said this best. If you're not going to change what you eat or how often you exercise, don't get on the scale. Right? You're, gonna, you're collecting data that's just going to make you feel bad and you're not willing to change. With your content marketing, if you're measuring awareness, engagement, and conversion, and retention, but you don't do anything different, why bother? There's no so what, as my business partner and, and friend Katie Robert would say. There's no so what. What are you going to do with this information? What decisions are you going to make? What actions are you going to take? If you say that your awareness numbers are low, and then that's it, you, know, you hand off the slide in your monthly report, and then you move on with your day, and you didn't change what you're doing to generate awareness, then you shouldn't have bothered putting it together in the first place. It was just a waste of your time. On the other hand, if you just measure one thing, like say, yeah, you know what, we're, we're, we're not in a position to measure engagement or conversion or retention, but I can tell you how many people I'm in front of, and you optimize the heck out of that, you'll do well. There's a lesson that um, my friend Julian Smith said. He said, pick a number that it is something you have control over that's related to your, your buyer's journey and make it go up 8% week over week. 
one number. That's it. Pick one number. Maybe it's new users to your website. If you can make new users to your website go up 8% week over week without fail, everything else in the value chain will do better. Right? Pick one thing and figure out what levers and knobs and dials and buttons you have to manipulate to get that number to go up 8% week over week. And you will see success flow from that point. So that's the, that's the corresponding side to these data points is you've got to take action on them. And the more data points you have and the more that you track, the more decisions you have to make. So if you don't have the bandwidth or the budget or the people to make a bunch of decisions, then just pick one and start there until your business improves enough that you have the budget to work on a, po- a second point and then work on that and so on and so forth. If you try to do everything all at once, you're going to do nothing for a very, very long time. It's like you know, having a, a jar of jelly with like one, spot of, one spoonful of jelly at the bottom and you've got 100 pieces of bread. Should you try and put a tiny bit of jelly spread super thin, like you know, one atom thin across all 100 pieces of bread? That's not going to be very satisfying. It's going to take you a really long time. And by the time you're done it's not going to have much of an impact. Or do you say, you know what? We're going to put 99 pieces of bread aside and, and put jelly on, on, enough, on one piece enough that I can taste it. Everything in content marketing is about focus. Right? You can create content about everything. But in doing so, you don't really create content about anything. On the other hand, if you create content in a focused manner in a channel where you want to do well, like video, for example, and you, you knock it out of the park, you will create the resources you need to do it again. And again, it's kind of like investing, right? You could spread out a dollar to a hundred different banks, a penny here, a penny there. But when you think about how interest works and compounds, you're better off putting that $1 in one bank. And then figure out how do you get your next dollar. So that's my caution with data around content marketing. Yes, you can measure all these things. And you should collect the data so that it's available for you when you do want to process it later on. But focus on one thing and improve it. Improve the daylights out of it. And then use the, the, the revenue and the business impact from that to invest in the next thing. One at a time. So that's my answer to Brian's question.